Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. In my last video, I showed you some of the new features inside of Power Virtual Agent, which is currently in preview. And one of those features was the ability to have dynamic values in a list variable in Power Virtual Agent. So what that means is that I was able to query values of a table inside of Dynamics 365 and feed those back inside of Power Virtual Agents as options from customers to pick from when they're chatting with your bot. Now, I didn't show you yet how to actually create that flow to query those values and feed those back into Power Virtual Agent. So that's what this video is about. If you're interested in this, don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. Let me give you a quick refresher of what last week's video was about. So I, I kind of wanted to show you my setup first. You see here, I have several cases here. I'm going to open up this first one. And my cases actually have a category field that you see over here. And the category field is pointing at a table and that table is called drop down value. So I'm going to pull up that table here. And you can see here that this is showing you my active case types. Now, I've built this out a little bit. I'm using this also for conferences to show lead sources, etc. cetera. Um, but you could also just use this as a case type. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you here is, is kind of how this is set up. So I'm going to go ahead and open this billing issues case type. And what you notice is that this is showing you this type field is showing you the different ways that I'm using this table, right? And then you can also see that it has a name, right? So this is called billing issues. And you can see the billing issues case type does not have a parent category because it's a parent itself. And then you have child subcategories on that as well. So if I open up this bill not received, you notice here that this parent category for this bill not received uh, drop down value or case type is billing issues. So you kind of need to understand how this is set up because that way the flow that I'm going to, uh, to build for this will make more sense. All right. So now let's go back to what I showed you in last week's video, right? I showed you, uh, how we can get those drop down values. I just showed you, uh, inside of the power virtual agent. So I'm going to show you that again. I'm going to do drop down and you're going to see this message. Let me get your options. And then it's going to run this power automate flow. And as you can see, what it's showing me here is those drop down values, those drop down values that do not have a parent. So these are basically those parental drop down values. Now, if I would go in there and if I would deactivate any of these, they will not show up in here the next time. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So this video is really about this power automate flow. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that so I can show you exactly how I build that power automate flow. So I'm going to click on edit here. And I'm just going to give it a second. There we go. While it loads, I was just going to say that. So the, the first thing that you'll notice here is that this power virtual agents, this first step, it does not have an input, right? Normally, a lot of times what we see with these flows that are working with power virtual agents is that you would pass data from power virtual agents into your power automate flow. Now I'm not doing that, right? I'm not asking a question or anything like that. And that's why this particular uh, first step is blank, right? We're not feeding any data from power virtual agents into this flow. So then the next step, as you'll see here is a 
a step that's going to allow us to initialize a variable. And that's really for us to kind of hold that data of those drop down values, right? We're going to get a list of drop down values and that's why we're using this array. So you would normally, right, just have this first step, then you would click here on plus and then add an action. And then you can just start to type initialize variable. And then you will notice that here on the bottom. So all you have to do is just select that. You can see here that I have then the option to pick what type of variable I want to use, right? Well, I want to use an array, right? That's kind of what we saw here. And then all you have to do is just enter the name of that variable over here. So all I did is I just entered, I just typed in drop down, and that's how I initialized that variable. So I'm going to delete that step here. So once we've done that initialize variable step, then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to list some rows. Now you can see here that I'm using the list rows legacy connector. And the reason for that is because power virtual agents and dynamics 365 customer service are not in the same environment, right? They're not, uh, living in the same environment and that's why I have to connect to a different environment which is again why I'm using this connector right this is going to allow me to select an environment that I want to query the data from so all you have to do from here is again you're going to do add an action and then you're going to say list rows you could also search for dataverse right and this is that legacy connector that I used, but if these guys are in the same environment, then you can just use this Microsoft Dataverse list rows, right? Because, and that's the step over here, because again, right, you just, you're connecting to the same environment, so you don't have to pick that environment. So in my case, I needed to do that, right? So I just clicked here on uh, list rows legacy, and that will then, as you can see here, allow us to select our environments and then select that table. So that's kind of what I did here, right? I have my environments, I have my table name. Now, if I click on advanced options, you'll notice that I have a little bit of filtering going on here as well, because I don't want to bring in all the dropdown values, right? Just those dropdown values that are a case type and that's kind of what you're seeing over here, this new underscore type, that's that type dropdown that you saw. So here it says equals two, and that means I only want dropdown values that are of case type. Then we have state code equals zero, and that's really, I only want active dropdown values, right? Anything that's been deactivated, I do not want those. And then lastly, it says here, new parent value equals null. So you saw that earlier, right? I just want the case types that do not have a parent because those are the parents, right? So any child categories, right? They already have a parent and I don't want to bring them in. So that's kind of how I'm filtering this query. All right, so let me just go ahead and now go to the next step. So while I do that, I can go ahead and delete this one. So the next step, as you can see here, is an apply to each, but guess what? You do not have to add that apply to each yourself. What we're gonna do now is actually append the value from this list row steps to that variable. So when we initialize that variable, that was nothing more than a container that we created, right? We're just creating a container. And then later on, we can actually store data in there. So that's what we're doing over here. So here we're creating the container. Here we're grabbing the data from Dataverse. And now we're going to store that here in that array variable. So the way I did that is again, you're gonna insert a new step you're going to add an action and you're going to search for append to array variable. And here 
it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see right now that apply to each is not happening yet, right? So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to select because I could have multiple variables. I only have one, but I could have multiple. So I'm, I need to select where I want to store data. So I'm going to say this drop down, right? Remember we called it drop down. So that's the one I want to store the data in. And then which value do I want to store? Well, I want the name of those drop down values, right? So I'm going to look for the name field of this list row step and here you can see the name field now when we are listing rows that means we're going to get multiple rows multiple records right so we want to get the name of each of those individual records and the system knows that so as soon as i click here on name it's going to add this apply to each step to it it's going to put this little box in the apply to each because we want to get the name for each individual record, right? So let me click on name here. And there you go. Now you can see it added this apply to each step here, right? So again, we don't have to do that. The system will automatically do that by itself. All right, since this step is already in there, again, let me delete this as well. And let's go now to the next step. And you can see here the next step is a compose step, right? So you're going to do, again, just click plus, add an action, compose. And here you can see on the bottom the compose step. So that's what you just click on. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put your mouse in here and you're going to click here on expression. And you can see I've already done that. So what we're doing right now is... We, we know that in this apply to each step that we're actually appending this value to this array variable, right? Well, what we actually need to do now, what we're doing here is I'm tur turning that variable now into a string. So the values in this variable called dropdown, we need to turn that into a string. And the reason for that is that otherwise we cannot feed that back to power virtual agents. So that's all we're doing here, right? You just need this string variables and then the variable is called drop down, and that's really all we need to do. So as soon as you enter that, this button is going to show OK. So let me just go ahead and show you that. So if I get rid of this, I'm going to put this cursor in here, do expression, enter this value, click OK, and that's my compose action. So the next step is going to also be a compose action. And let me actually show you what we're going to do there. So I'm going to open up this run history here. So you can see all the steps here. We're going to list the rows, apply to each, compose. Um, and what happens here in this compose step, you can see here the outputs. So these are all of those drop down values that I want, but look at this. It actually has a bracket here in the beginning or whatever we want to call this here at the end as well. And all the values are in between this, these quotes. So this is not how I want this to be feeded back to power virtual agents. So I need to get rid of these characters, right? And that's what I'm doing in this compose two step. So if I go back here, let me click on edit. There we go. And let's go and open this compose to action. So what we're doing here is we're doing another expression. Let me actually move up here a little bit. So we have a nested replace action here. Oops, that you can see over here. Let me show you what this looks like here in Notepad. So. I'm doing a couple of replaces, right? The first thing I'm doing is you can see here replace and a nested replace, replace again. This is actually taking the outputs of that first compose action, right? That's what we're saying over here. Look inside or grab the outputs from that first compose action and then replace anytime you see these quotes, right? Replace that with nothing. That's what we're saying here. Then we're going to have a bracket, right? This opening bracket. Replace that with nothing. 
so basically remove it and then we have this closing bracket and replace that with nothing so we're basically just removing that and then we're going to get the output here in compose 2 that we're feeding back to power virtual agents right so that's going to be that list of records in power virtual agents I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to hit that like button also don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again thanks again for watching until next time